we know that if Rn is the nominal interest rate compounded m times per year, then the effective annual interest rate denoted by Re equals 1 plus the nominal rate of interest divided by m, which is the number of compounding periods per year, all this to the power m minus 1. So suppose you deposit $100 in a bank account today at 10% per annum compounded semi-annually, then we know that Rn, the nominal rate of interest, equals 10% and the number of compounding periods denoted by M equals 2. So that the effective annual interest rate denoted by RE equals 1 plus 10% divided by 2, all this to the power 2 minus 1. And this equals 10.25%. Let's say we've made this deposit for 2 years then the future value of this investment equals the initial amount of $100 deposited in the bank account times 1 plus 10.25% square. And this equals 121.55 dollars. Let's take another example. Suppose that you expect to receive $300 in three years' time. Question is, what is the present value of this $300 today if the appropriate discount rate is 6% per annum compounded monthly? So the effective annual interest rate equals 1 plus 6% divided by 12, all this to the power 12 minus 1, which equals 6.17%. So the present value, or PV for short, equals 300 divided by 1 plus 6.17% to the power 3, which equals 250.69 dollars. So we can generalize the argument as follows. If P is the principal value of an investment, and we make the investment for t years, then the future value of the investment equals p times 1 plus the effective annual interest rate to the power t, which equals p times 1 plus the nominal interest rate denoted by rn divided by m, which is the number of compounding periods per year, all this to the power m times t. On the other hand, if x is the final amount that we expect to receive in t years, then the present value today of that amount equals x over 1 plus the effective annual interest rate to the power t. And this equals x over 1 plus the nominal rate of interest divided by m, all this to the power m times t. Now finally, let's say you go to a bank to deposit $1 for a year. You're hoping that bank pays you interest on your deposit of RQ equals 5% per annum with 
quarterly compounding. But the banker tells you that they pay interest of RS based on semi-annual compounding. Now you know basics of interest rate compounding, so you begin to think what interest rate RS would leave you indifferent between the two rates. You decide to calculate the future value of a dollar with both rates. With quarterly compounding, your dollar at the end of the year will be worth one dollar times one plus five percent divided by four. All this to the power of four. This gives you the future value of a dollar when interest rate is 5% per annum with quarterly compounding. To be indifferent between the two rates, this must be equal to $1 times 1 plus RS, the interest rate with semi-annual compounding, divided by 2, all this to the power 2. Solving for RS, we get 2 times 1 plus 5% divided by 4, all this to the power 4 over 2 minus 1. And this should be equal to 5.03% per annum. So we can see that nominal interest rate compounded semi-annually is greater than that compounded quarterly. And that's because interest that deposit accumulates over time is now being compounded with lower frequency. So finally, we can generalize the argument as follows. If RQ is the stated interest rate with compounding frequency Q, it can be converted to interest rate RS with compounding frequency S as follows. RS equals 1 plus RQ over Q to the power Q over S minus 1, and this whole expression is multiplied by S. So we have seen how we can convert nominal interest rate into effective annual interest rate and use it to compute present value and future value of an investment. We also covered how interest rate can be converted from one compounding frequency to another. In next video on compound interest, we will cover the concept of continuous compounding. If there are any questions or comments, please feel free to post. Thank you.